Hello everybody and welcome to Success Life Live and this evening's edition of Author Talk. I'm so excited that you have all joined me for our 7 p.m. Wednesday Author Talk. This is where we get together, we get to meet the author, talk about the book, sort of lean in in a different way. So often I get the opportunity to read either galley copies or first edition copies of fellow authors and JMTers and mindset people. And so it's always a really big pleasure and privilege for me when I get to like call the author into the room and say, hey, can you join me over here, Mr. Author? Can you join me and talk about the book? Talk about what you were thinking? Because I, 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 I just like knowing what was going on in the author's mind. So just so you know what we've got going on. So up tonight is Larry's book, Your Life Matters. And then next, um, let me check my note. Wednesday, I know you can't see me. Wednesday, December 19th. Sorry about that, folks. We have Eric Kay's Let Me Sell You Something. And then I believe it's January 9th. Yep, January 9th, we have Sebastian's Lead Like a Superhero. So we've got author talks going clear until the middle of January. And it's really always, like I said, a special privilege and a special treat when I get to meet the author, get to read their book. Um, I've got a couple, as you know, Dr. Tanya Lowe was in the house last week and she uh, is sending me a galley copy of her book so we can get that read um, and then get that shared out with you. And then two other people I've actually been told are sending books my way. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm just waiting for Larry to jump in and join us here in the room. Uh, let me just check over here. You know, you gotta have like 10 pieces of technology. So as you can see, I, I, I sort of get in the cycle of reading and reading and reading and reading a lot. Um, I was the kid in school that was not a natural reader. Reading was a struggle for me. And then reading comprehension and writing. And now what I discovered is when I know what the venue and when I know what the, the theme or the genre is, I can really dig in. Now, I always get teased by the author in the house that... Uh, all these self-help, leadership books, things like that, they all sound alike. Well, they kind of do a little, I'm gonna agree, maybe a bit. But for me, that's what I like because it intensifies, it drills deep, it sinks in longer so that I can actually learn more, do more, and kind of be more what I do every single day. So I am glad I'm waiting for Larry here. He should be jumping in. Give me just a minute, I wanna check something over here. I'm just gonna wander off screen for a minute. There we go. Sorry about that. So any minute now, Larry should be jumping in. So Larry's book, uh, Your Life Matters, How to Get Out of Life, How to Get Out of the Life You Don't Want and Live the Life You Do Want. Um, got this a couple weeks ago, did a quick read through, loved it a lot. Let me just do, oh, where's the magic trick I'm looking for? Uh, no, oh, that's not it. Anyhow, Gail, um, I assume you're in the room and you can see it fine. I'm gonna check up here. I've got another magic button I need to press. There we go. Looks like everything is broadcasting well. If somebody could give me a thumbs up or a number one or a high five or a, I don't know, pick something just to let me know we are reaching the corners of the universe and bouncing back and forth. I know this is an unusual time for so many people because we're normally here at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And it's 7 p.m. I mean, it's been like 12 hours since we had a chance to talk. So if you would take a moment, say hello, give me a thumbs up, give me a shout out. Let me know that you're in the room and that you're able to connect and see everything well. I'm going to use my little iPad over here and check in with Larry and make sure that everything is good on his side. Da, 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 da. There we go. Seeing and joining us here in just a minute. Looks like he just walked in the room, so to speak. He should be connecting and joining in in just a minute. We already test drove this earlier today, so I know it works. Or all things IT, it should work until you actually need it to work, and that's when it acts like a total fool and messes up and does crazy things to you. So let's just give it just a minute here. Well, I'm going to start talking about the book because I've read the book. I've done my homework. Um, but again, um, 
what I loved when I started the title, the title is The Big Draw. So when you're writing a book, it's so funny because it's like cereal on a shelf for me. When I'm walking down the book aisle or when I'm, you know, scanning the bar, the side of the book, the title <coughs> has got to tell me what I'm getting. You know, your life matters. I was like, yeah, I'm already in agreement with that. Yes, my life does matter. And then the idea that when you read the subtitle or the secondary title and it says, um, you, how to get out of the life you don't want and live the life that you do want, I was like, even better, because that's what I want. That's what I need is to get a strategy of getting out of sort of the stuckness, the, the position that I'm currently in, the situation that's been bogging me down, dragging me back, holding me in place. And, you know, so often we get these mindset books and these leadership books and these talking about books of, you know, how to build the pinnacle life or how to build the perfect life or how to live a life of. And so when I got a title that was so clear and honest and saying, hey, you just need to get out of the life you're in, I was all in. So I see Larry is trying to connect. I'm just going to let him do his thing over there in the corner of the universe. And I am going to do the thing over here that I get to do. Um, what I liked about, let me try one more thing. If you all can stand my fingers one more second. It looks good. I'm going to just jump over here. Um, yeah, we're doing live. We're live, Larry. You should be able to see it, connect to it, find it and friend it. Yeah. Looks live to me. I'm seeing us all. We're out there talking and living. Go ahead, Larry, one more time. Ask to join or try and connect. And if worse comes to worse, I'll hit the restart button. Let me try you one more time here, Larry. Oh, I see Melanie's out there. We'll just pull Melanie into the room. How's that? You should be live, Larry. I'll give you a second here. So anyhow, when Larry, so the way Larry wrote the book was, um, Your Life Matters is divided into seven chapters, each with three steps to follow. And so as he went through the seven chapters and he discussed a principle or um, a cornerstone, one of, chapter one is loving life. Chapter two is believing in yourself. Chapter three is finding faith. Chapter four is letting go. Chapter five is getting right. Chapter six is knowing you can do it. Chapter seven, what would I be saying today? And then chapter eight is transformation is real. And so within that, he tells his personal story. He tells the story of where he was. And at one point he was battling cancer. He was battling drug addiction. He was battling homelessness and, and um, incarceration and all of the troubled youth and all of the troubled young adulthoodness. He is very clear and very open about exposing in his life. So when he talks about getting out of the life that you don't want and into the life you do, it's not that he was sitting on some Ivy League college campus and writing some sort of fantasy book. Larry was actually living the life, walking through the life, digging deep into the life. Um, life sort of in the hard way. Apologize for the head turn. Um, and then he was... He was saying, look, you know, this is the life. This is what I've got to be living. This is where I'm at. And I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to continue to, to fight drug addiction and homelessness and, and poverty and, and all of those things. But how do I get from where I'm at to where I want to go? Somebody needs to lay out a roadmap. Somebody needs to lay out a story. Somebody needs to, to lay out something that I can begin to follow and begin to move through. And where he struggled was that, Nobody had really sat down with him. And I see this so often in our story that I work with a lot of youth and, and kids in, in care. And nobody really sits down and says, here's how you make this step. Here's how you begin to move. Here's the things you need to think about. It's almost as if we're supposed to have this coming of age party, this moment of awakening, this position in life that just suddenly grants us awareness. And I love that Larry um, adds quotes throughout his book. And the one that I really enjoyed was in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. Um, and that idea that within each of us is that invincible summer that even in the hardship, even in the darkness, even in the chaos and confusion, I'm going to try this one more time from over here. And whoop. 
sorry about that. That in that winter season, in that, that dark and, and hardship place, that he was able to recognize that there was an invincible summer or an invincible burning passion, an invincible hope, an invincible life that he wanted to go out there. He Hello. Says, Good morning, Larry. I was just sort of recanting part of the introduction, but I will let you take it from here. I was telling the story of how you had sort of a uh, less than idyllic youth. Go ahead. And how you uh, often struggled between drug addiction and homelessness and incarceration and that rinse and repeat kind of cycle that happens to so many kids um, that begin down that path. So I'll let you take the story from there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. It was an interesting journey. I hope you can hear me. I yes. can hear you fine. It was a very interesting journey. And we're good. Yeah. It was a very interesting journey. Not just that, but getting us live tonight. <laughs> that, that was interesting. And it's taken us two days, song. friends. Yeah, it's taken. But let me tell you, what I discovered during that journey was, was where I found my life position at, Eric. Uh, and that was, uh, I'm not okay, you're okay. So I was living in this negative life position of I'm not okay and everybody else is okay. So I ourselves in this place, we do whatever it takes to be okay. Hook up with the wrong people, do things that you know you shouldn't be doing, crimes, drugs, running away from home. Uh, it, uh, it was a very valuable lesson and uh, many stories along that, but it all started when I realized my life position was not where it needed to be. And that wasn't a physical life position. It was an attitude. It was a, a decision that some young, dumb kid didn't know any better, but he learned quickly. <laughs> so what I like, and I'm going to jump through, as you can see, I've kind of put a lot of like notes in the book. Sorry, I had to color all over it. Yeah, I'm with you. Just... I know you got a lot of tabs there, Eric, and I appreciate it. So, so uh, I like, bring I like it on. Page 17, when you say everything that happens starts now. Starting now will be based on your belief in yourself, your ability to say no, your ability to make good decisions, your ability to avoid peer pressure, your ability to prevent others from determining your path, your path in life. Was that taught to you or did something just slap you upside the back of the head that awakened you into that? There was a bunch of slaps, Eric. <laughs> there was a bunch of slaps. There was, a peop there was people that came up alongside of me and they were like running my race with me and trying to say, Larry, uh, you're, 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 mess you're messing up royally. But what I had to do is I had to discover this this magic, this four-leaf clover. My old friend Merle Hager, God rest his soul, used to sing a song about I'm searching for a four-leaf clover. And he kept searching it, but all along the four-leaf clover was in here, right? I like so, that. yeah, I, there's a lot of things that occurred. There was a lot of people that showed value in me when I didn't feel I was valuable worthy. And that was telling me they were knocking on the door saying, Larry, your life matters. You know, but I didn't get it because I didn't want to get it. But uh, the more I learned to listen while I'm writing my fifth book, Simply Listen. <laughs> it's coming a little later. Probably should have been the first one, Eric. But uh, some of these folks came up beside me and started planting seeds of value in me. I started realizing that maybe this poor lost soul can be worthy to the world, to someone else. Laying on my bunk in a prison cell, staring out the window, wondering, is this all it's going to be? Is this my life? Is this the life I've chosen? Uh, it took a chaplain, a horse trough, to help me wake up a little bit. And I think you probably read that story. I, well, it I also have, took... I have to, I have to let the, the audience know. So, so Larry... Um as he said, was in prison. And when you paint the prison picture, what I love about it, was it in Alabama or Mississippi? 
It was in Arkansas. It's about the same. <laughs> but it was in Arkansas, so have yeah. Have you ever seen one of those movies where they've got a bunch of people chain gang together, hoeing cotton or It was a chain gang. The of the day is? That was Larry. And at some point... Yeah, I was on it. And at some point, I Larry decided cotton. he was going to be the one guy, you know, the one you see in the movie that decides he's going to just pull off his chain and lay down in the ditch and then try and run away the next morning. How'd that work out for you? Well, that didn't work out well at all. That was a valuable lesson, though, Eric. I was given a trustee position, uh, you know, a couple times. So people were seeing something in me. Even the warden and the, and the guards, they were seeing this value, this potential leader maybe, right? And uh, I was getting these trustee positions. Well, the last one I got, I worked in the rice fields. So they drop you off in the pickup truck in the morning, you have a hole. That's the thing you dig with. And they drop you off in the rice fields. And my job was to fix the rice paddies, meaning the, the levee. Uh -huh. It's almost like an old Led Zeppelin song about the, when the levee breaks, right? Well, I was out there to fix the levee so all the water would run out. Well, one day I had this great idea. Ain't nobody watching. Maybe it's time for the great escape. So I talked this other trustee into running with me. Now, we had no clue where we were going, what we were doing. And, and it was kind of like Guatemala in 2013. We showed up with an, an interpreter with John Maxwell team. We didn't know where we were going or what we were going to do. But what I realized later in life there, I was running. I, it was fight or flight. Uh, I was running nowhere. I was still running from myself. Eric. And uh, I want to help others to quit running from themselves and their dreams. And... Uh, so all these things have become a lesson, Eric. Well, what I love they caught me 24 hours later. Yeah, I was going to say your 40 minutes of freedom, but I think you actually said it was 24. Um, but I love this realization that you had, and I think it's somewhat that we all share, and you talk about it on page 65. Maybe it was better to be locked up and safe and then set free and being lost. Yes, when you're totally lost. And, and, and I was close to being set free, Eric. It was, it was a sad thing, but it was a real thing. I know now it was a God thing because a lot of things happened afterward. If I would have been set free then, I was so lost, so confused, I would have either ended up six feet under or, or, or back for maybe a life sentence. So my running was really helping me slow down. But the God thing came into play when I realized things that happened afterward. And I, and I so, when I read that, that, um, what was it that maybe it was better that I was locked up than set free. I sometimes think of that when we're trying to develop our personal change, when we're trying to do a life of transformation, when we're trying to create something new, we want to be at a runner's pace. We want to be out of the current job, out of the current relationship, out of the current health condition, out of whatever is currently we want our out. container, <laughs> thinking that if I could only get free of this circumstance, then I would be totally set and ready to go. And that's not totally set free. That you played out in the prison yard, so to speak, was like you felt as soon as you could drop that chain and get over the levee in 10 minutes down the road, you'd be smooth sailing. But you hadn't really thought about what the next thing after freedom would look like. We didn't know where we were going. That we didn't even know. Now, here's the, here's the beautiful thing Eric, when we talk about leadership for your listeners. And I talk, you've read the book, and I, I love you for it, Eric, taking the time. Uh, I talk also about man made prisons, not just the gray walls of Rayford Crows and then on me. That's a Leonard Skinner song. But the prisons we build around us that we build ourselves in for fears of our dreams and what people think about us. And there's more of those people in prisons than there are in the United States in the prison system. And, and so many of people are afraid to tear down those walls. And that's why the theme of your life matters. Once we accept that our life matters and we can be more than what we are, sitting in that man-made cell or that, that or, or self-made cell, then we can start tearing down those walls and we can find value and we can make a difference in the world. And we, Eric, just like you, we want to help people remove those bars and those walls so they can live the life they're meant to live. So for those people just jumping in, this is Larry 
over there, and this is Larry's book. Hello, right my name there. is Larry. Um, I'll say it like Don Maxwell. Huh? Hello, my name is Larry. I'm your friend. Yeah, you're Larry. You're the author tonight because it's author talk. You can be the friend tomorrow. Um, so I love the fact that you address that question on page 31. You say, how do you get out and stay out? And you said, my three simple steps are, and if you need, I can read them to you, but the three steps are. Yeah, go, yeah. there's a lot of steps. And, uh, but there's three words that guided me along that journey to get out of that rut, a crack rut. That my, I talk about my friend, the crack pipe, and debt. Does any of your listeners know about their friend, debt? Have they ever had a friend called debt? <laughs> well, mine turned into the other friend called bankruptcy. But there's three words that guided me along, and that's belief, confidence, and courage. Those are my three words, and they have been with me for years. I've shared them in public seminars, everywhere, that I believe we all need these three guiding words. So once I found I had belief in myself that I could be more and do more, I had to have the courage to step out and realize that I could climb out of the valleys and climb out of these terrible ruts I got myself into. And then through that, I would have the confidence to keep moving forward. And uh, <laughs> those were critical for me, uh, Eric. And I love that. So I challenge people in the book to get their right. three you words. Said, you know, believe in yourself, find the confidence lying deep inside you, um, waiting to burst out, and then have the courage to begin moving and continue moving. And so, that belief in ourselves it's interesting um and i love on page 32 that intimidated by our enemies never be intimidated by our enemies sometimes the enemy is within sometimes the enemy is that's within. actually a book i've written called the enemy within yeah, there you go. Uh, it's going to be an book but in most cases eric you're right you got it you got it right on brother uh great minds think alike the enemy within is us. It's all, we always have to have a conversation with the person in the mirror, right? We always got to look in there. We got to look deep, though. Not just is my hair right and my glasses fixed right. We got to go deep every day to be our very best every day. And then by doing that, you know, we have to face reality. You know, they say leaders define reality. Yeah. And. And what I love when we talk about the enemy within or defeating the enemy within or going against the enemy within, so often that idea, now you would have had a perfect excuse. You know, you were somebody that had grown up as a kid on the street that had run with a bad crowd, came from social, economic, educational um, disadvantage. You were involved with crime, you were involved in in prison you were addicted to drugs and so somebody could say you know what we don't need to expect a lot from larry i mean come on like larry started with three strikes against him and now he's filled the entire bottom nine let's let him go and yet you said all of those labels all of those statements all of those things that you're placing on me how did you make a decision like i can't hear that anymore because I got to say, most people would just be like, you know what? Below average is my high score. Yeah, well, that's a choice. So I, I, I want to make new choices every day. So I had to learn to pull the weeds for one thing. Now, what, I, what we're sharing today to your listeners, most listeners already know this. I had to learn to pull the weeds, and I had to pull down into the rut. I mean, it's like pulling that little head, that left of my hair out there. I had to pull, I had to pull those weeds. I had to keep believing. I had to learn that before I can have faith in anything, I had to have faith in myself. And sure, everybody has a hard luck story. We all have stories. We all have a book to share. And, and through these stories, they're meant for a purpose to help other people. Now, my story might not be any worse. My stage four cancer, attempted suicide. The good thing with all this is today, Eric, Anybody who's facing drug addiction, re-entry from prison, suicidal, uh, cancer, stage four, uh, your spouse, two, two bouts, we can, we can relate to their story and we can reach out and help them. So everything that's came to me, I don't look as a curse. I look as a blessing to serve others. And, and I think when I started doing that, I realized all that was meant for a purpose. Well, and what I love is you, you capture that on page 47. See, 
got my notes. You think I memorized the book, huh? You did good. Um, page four, I give you an A+. Plus. God doesn't waste an experience. He doesn't waste what you've been through. He'll use you to help others He'll, who are dealing with the same situation. And then further down, you mentioned, if you want to impress people, talk about your success. If you want to help people, talk about your failures. And I think that's one of the things that um, you do in a really great way throughout the book, Your Life Matters by the way, everybody, you do it in a way that I, I don't like it so caught up in the story of the hardship, but it at least brings authenticity and credibility to the journey. And so I, I really want to first thank you as a reader for saying, you know what, this is who I was like, folks, like I, I if I tried to impress it you, it it you 10 minutes to figure out it was a lie. And so you come yeah. at it straight on. Yeah, and it was tough, Eric. I, this is my fourth book. On average, it takes me two years to write a book. We've written books on our cancer journey. Uh, I thought it was terrible. Debbie's cancer two years later. Guess what? We both co-authored a book. We both speak together at American Cancer Relay for Life events, something that Debbie has never done before. We found a blessing in it. We found that whatever comes to us and what we go through is supposed to go through us to serve others. So that's what we've accepted, Eric. So the prison sentence, the, the crimes, the all that, it's, it's like, oh, okay, I'm tired of hearing about all the negative stories. Well, yes, we all have them. But once we realized that I was never alone, the same God in the valley is on the mountaintop, and I've been on the mountain. I'm living a great life. I'm debt free. I make good money. Life is wonderful. Uh, do I still have some bad decisions and do I hit some ruts and roadblocks? Yes. But through all this history, it's helped me overcome it. But when I go back to this book took me four, almost 45 years to write because I was afraid. I was afraid of what people might think of me or say about me or companies would hire me. And chapter one was going to be letting go. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't do that. It's too much, <laughs> too much stuff, right? I had to share where I'm at today first. That's why we went to Loving Life. Chapter 7 wasn't even in the book originally. And then I got to sit back and I started thinking, what, was I, what would I say to me 45 years ago? Eric, chapter 7 was the hardest chapter for me to write. I wrote it in tears. When I shared it the other night to a group of people in the Mansonary, I was almost in tears. What would I say to me? It's going to be okay. You're going to find your way. And, uh, and I found my way. I'm not, I'm not that bad guy. My stepdad, my real dad was a bank robber. I didn't know that for the longest, but he was in prison. And then after a while, I started thinking, oh, my God, I got his DNA, right? I'm going to end up being a bank robber. You know, but I, I, I made some new decisions, or I might have been. My message to everybody, when I started the book, Eric, it wasn't even titled Your Life Matters because books evolve. The first, a year ago, it was called Get Out, Stay Out. And after about a year of me brainstorming this and asking questions and getting feedback, I said to myself, that sounds pretty harsh. That sounds rough. Get out, stay out. That's something my stepdad said to me. <laughs> but, but then after really digging deep, the, the question was, what do I really want the message to be? And what's been the message that was given to me on the silver platter more than more times than I can count until I start accepting it. And that was your life matters, Larry. You can do more. And that's all I want to do is remind people because Eric, you and I both know sometime in our life, we question if our life matters, our purpose in life, our significance is what I'm doing the right thing to be doing in the work world. We all question it. I don't care who you are. Uh, but then once we find a true purpose and a calling that we think is really for us, then we have to jump. We got to go for it. We got to realize my life matters. I'm still going to screw up. I'm still going to make some bad calls. But at the end of the day, the choices I make make me, and I can make some new choices. Like I share in the book, if you don't like the road you're on, go pave a new one, right? I like that. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because I love the way you said it, and then – on page 115, life is about stepping in mud puddles, falling into ruts, driving through potholes, falling forward, 
and learning through experiences. When stuck, you only have two choices, stay stuck or make the decision to get unstuck. Pick yourself up and get moving. Yeah, and let me tell you what I learned this the most from. Back in the 70s and 80s, there was a TV show called Scared Straight. Oh, I remember that. About prison life. And they got all these bad, tough guys scaring those young guys, right? Well, out of 3,000 inmates, there were 30 of them that were given the opportunity to be in what was called a therapeutic community. And it was a new building, and you had your own room. Well, cell. I'll call it a room. It's like a holiday inn. You know, but uh, why was I chosen out of 3,000 to be one of 30? Because I believe that people seen value in me. And I believe that was when I learned all that from the therapeutic community, and uh, which helped me learn to accept my responsibilities and understand truly that whatever choices I make, I can make new choices. And, I, and all those new choices don't need to be about me anymore, Eric. They have to be about how I can help and add value to others. How I can live, go from, as John Maxwell teaches us, go from success to significance. Success is about me and all my stuff. Significance is about you and your listeners. Well, and where was it? I know that was, um, damn, I lost that bookmark. It's one of these, some over here. Um, well, what's your thought? What and my, is, after writing your book for two years and editing it, I do my best to remember all of it, but it, it gets hard. Uh, I don't have a ghostwriter. I'm not no fancy author like like uh, Nicholas Sparks or anybody. So uh, it's funny he has a hundred million. So but. reading comprehension was like my F. Like I like for me, I couldn't remember my own name after I wrote it. Now because I read so much. Um, and I read it with the intent like this to interview the author, share the content and, 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 and like pass it on. I think there's a little trigger in my brain that says, no, you got to remember this because it's got to serve somebody somewhere, somehow, or it wouldn't have come into your beingness. So it's bigger than you. It goes beyond you. Eric. I'm getting old. So who knows? Yeah, Let, can I share this with you so about success? I talk about pain when pain I do a lot of coaching, mm -hmm. okay, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, ahead. it's interesting because on page 51, you ask, um, these three questions are about self-faith. Because you need to have faith in yourself to work through them, to work through them and with them. And you say, the three questions we should ask ourselves are, why am I here? This is a question regarding your purpose. Then you say, the second question is, does my life matter? This is a question regarding your significance. And then what is my purpose? This is a question regarding your intention. Yes. What it's, I wanted to ask I, I work is, these questions daily. How do you do it daily? I work it daily. That's how you get to the intentional part. If it's not daily, it's not intentional. So, you know, my purpose, so I, I, I shared recently with a group about living a daily legacy. So I just don't want to be remembered 20 years from now, all the, oh, Larry was a good guy. I want to leave daily legacy deposits. So that's my significance. So how can I leave a daily legacy every day, not just to clients, to strangers? I'm trying to convert, convert some Jehovah Witnesses in Cedarburg, <laughs> you know, but uh, so it's intentional daily. But uh, so that's the significance is leaving a legacy, a daily legacy, daily deposits in strangers. So I was asked uh, Monday night at a, at a presentation I gave, how did, what do you do to get daily motivation? I said, well, I, I got to get up every morning. I go walk. I talk to my creator, but I got to talk to people. <laughs> I want to connect. And my little town offers me that. There's always people out there. They're getting used to me now. Some of them are running there. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to save them, right? Uh, but <clears throat> when I talk to a lot of people now, I've, and, and, and I don't want your readers to get the wrong impression of this, but this is what I found. Success early on for me was making money, traveling the country, living that life, and I've done it, and I'm tired of it. 33 years of corporate travel. 
uh, living in airplanes and hotels, making good money and doing what I want. That was success. I think that I kept going after that because success became like a prison. It was holding me back, Eric, from my true potential. So I clouded myself and I enclosed myself in these walls of defined success as money, position, title, audiences, all that stuff. Today, I know truly, for me, uh, this is just a tip for listeners, that sometimes we use that success to hide from our true potential because maybe we're not ready to step up and step out. Maybe we're fearful of jumping. Maybe we're afraid of what might not work. I say be faithful in what might work. You know, faith and fear ask us to think to, to the same thing, to be afraid of something we can't see or don't know yet. So I, I challenge people today is tear down the walls of what you define as success and discover your true potential. And I believe true potential, even with audiences on keynotes and training, it's all about them. It's not about me no more. So well, I, my goal, Eric, is to tap on 8 billion shoulders, 8 billion people on the planet. And that's an aggressive goal, right? And tap them on the shoulder and say, hello, my name is Larry. I just want to remind you at some time in your life, I want you to remember that your life matters. And it's okay to change. It's okay to step out of the rut and be scared. I won't say the word, but fearful. And, uh, and that's all okay. Because as I say in chapter seven, you're going to find your way. And you're going to make a difference. Today, this young that young kid in a prison who was addicted to drugs and didn't even think he had a family that loved him ever would have never thought that he had a life that would make a difference. Today, I know my life's making it. I know our cancer journey is making a difference because our books are all over the country. We speak to relays. We, we have people come share with us with tears in their eyes. This book is in 15 states, two countries, prison. We got them in the prison ministry through Salvation Army. We got them in addiction services, suicide services, homeless shelters. We want to go where, those, where, where there are some people yelling for help, but we also want to go to just ordinary people like you and me who sometimes struggle with, does my life matter? What's my purpose? Well, and what I, again, um, this is Larry, and this is Larry's book, Your Life Matters, How to Get Out of the Life you don't want and live the life you do want. I don't know why that tongue ties me. Um, what I really, like I said- Because I you are living book, the life you do want, Eric. Pardon? I, that's it, I need to put a comma in my speaking. Um, what, I, what I really like, and I want the reader or the listener or the person, is when I say that it's a very simple book that what I mean by that word simple is it's a very authentic and real. It's not complicated. It's not over-processed. It's not full of all of these 21 steps and three principles and six tenets and all of this stuff that sometimes makes us feel so overwhelmed that even if we want to believe that my life mattered, I get so lost in the process that I begin to think that I'm not worthy of a life that matters. And what you've done so well with the book and you've done so consistently with the way you've presented the topic is you're like, look, it's not complicated, people. It's three steps. It's four things you need to know. Just hold on to it. Keep on chunking on it. Just keep moving through it. And I think that, like I said, having worked with kids at high risk and working with kids that were in and out of you know, juvenile services, sometimes we, meaning the good intended, come in with such a big, loud, large message that it turns people back. And what I love about your message in the book is it's very simple and it's very clear and it's very authentic that anybody anywhere could pick it up that's in that moment of depression or suicide or prison and drug addiction, the history that you share and go, okay, I can, I can start here. I can, this, this is my first step book to getting back into a life that could matter. Yeah, and, and Eric, I thank you for that. But, you know, when you talk about it, simple book, uh, you know, 
here you go. You know, I'm an eighth grade dropout. They kept me back twice in the fifth grade. And I realize now why they did that, because they thought, man, that guy is sharp. He can mentor the new fifth graders coming in. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a simple guy who wants to make life simple. And I see my friend Joe from Florida is, is with us. And, Joe, I love you. Joe and I have done business together. We ran public seminars. Joe actually te- did a testimonial for the book. And I see his notes. And, uh, and Jameson Bell, I see his name there. Jameson and I, he knows about the hillbilly iPad. That's a whole nother talk. But I taught Jameson Bell about the hillbilly iPad. <laughs> he called it that. But, see, Eric, I wrote it simple because I'm a simple person. And I want to make life simple for everybody. Sometimes we take it too serious. I was coaching a nationwide restaurant chain and on how they sit people. And I, and I said, you know, you got, you got four stations open and, and you're pulling people into station and you're setting them as far away as the, from the fireplace as you can. In Wisconsin, it's cold as you know what. <laughs> I, said, I said, why are you doing that? And I said, I think I know. And he goes, well, that's our, I said, your process. And I said, do this. And tell your boss to come talk to me. Don't let the process get in front of your mission statement. Uh, Because your mission statement was about in the spirit of pleasing people. Just by saying, where would you like to sit, would be in the spirit of pleasing people. They changed their method that night. And it made me so happy. I made a daily legacy deposit. Life can be so simple, Eric. I think as coaches, trainers, and speakers... We got to make this all difficult. I remember in my younger years, about 17, 18 years ago in the speaking business, people would tell me, Larry, don't respond to emails or phone calls quickly. And I said, why? Well, the people will think you're real busy. And I said, well, I'm not. <laughs> I, and I don't want to operate that way. When people reach out, especially a meeting planner, a speaker's bureau, or a conference coordinator, or a VP of sales, I want to show them that I'm fast, I'm simple, flexible. And I'm not going to wait to make you think I'm real busy to get back to you while somebody else is getting the gig. <laughs> you know, but I think in life we can keep things real simple and we can live the life we want. There's a friend that I noticed on here that I've worked with. I'll just say his first name is Jameson. I know today he left a great company and career to go live his dream. And, uh, and he's living in an area he always wanted to be in. So I know that Jameson got out of the life that he kind of liked and loved and is very good at to live the life he truly wanted. And it took some fear because he has a family and kids. But I know, I know my friend Jameson is truly living the life he wants to live. Just like uh, Joe and Lisa moving to Florida while I'm still in Wisconsin. You know, the, they beat me to live in that part. We can make it so simple, er, so simple once we tear down those walls of what we define as success and really search for that true potential and that dream inside of us. That's what I pray for everybody. Well, and I love this that on, so I, I have to give a shout out to Joe in a minute, um, but uh, on page 49, when you say you've got to have faith in yourself before you can have faith in anything else, including the process. And so I love that idea that so often we place faith in a process, a procedure, a policy, because as long as that thing on paper stays, then we don't have to take responsibility. But if we, as you said, approach something with a mission of service, a mission of value, a mission of legacy, that requires us to first believe that we have within us the ability to create that. And often because we fear our own full potential, We'll rely on the policy, the procedure, the guidelines, the advice of other people. So I love that you say you got to have faith in yourself first. And, and so because Joe's in the room and Joe's been shouting out all week about you being here, Joe, executive director, wrote uh, a little, um, uh, I guess, a, 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 an endorsement. I don't know the official word. So he writes about the book. I read a good number of books. I have to do it in my Joe voice. Wait a minute. I don't know if I can. I love Joe. Joe's a friend. Joe's a great guy. I don't know if I can sound Wisconsin, but I'll try. Um, I read a good number of books each year and found that 
And in, I found that an insightful book reveals the author's transformational steps. The author guides the reader on a journey of up-leveling the reader's life to better serve others. While you, the reader, may have different have a different set of, of life experiences than Larry, I firmly believe that you will find value and insight in what he shares. Yeah. You know, when Joe was one, when I reached out to Joe, and Joe, I hope you're listening, uh, because I truly admire you and respect you, is that I was a little afraid to send Joe the book, because I didn't know what he would think about that old Larry versus the, the, the Larry he knows. We worked a, a public seminar together, and he was the MC, and we, we, did, we did some good things, and uh, I was afraid, but that's why, you know, Chapter four, letting go. It sounds so cliche, but there's so much we have to let go of to reach for our potential. I just seen another name pop up. If I could bring up something, okay. there. there's a gentleman by Bob M. It's like coffee yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Bob Michael showed up. Uh, I've I worked with Bob. He, he he he. What a fantastic leader he was. I know Bob is living the life he truly wants today. Even though Bob, you did not buy the book. I know <laughs> that you're living it because you. You're in a wonderful marriage. You moved to another country. I love you, Bob. And I remember when your book came out. I remember when we rejoiced and met at a Starbucks. I know that Bob is living his life. I know that Joe and Lisa and Jameson, I know that they are, they've stepped out of that, the life they didn't want to go search for a new life. And, and on chapter three, I'm finding faith. It wasn't all about spiritual faith, as you said. It's about finding faith in yourself. Because you can't have faith in anything else till you discover that. And uh, whether it's God or your family or your friends or your business budget or, your, or the audience you're speaking to, it all begins within. Joe knows we were in Guatemala together. And it was transformation begins in me. And it took me a lot of years to figure that one out, Eric. I went back to the park that I got a lot of trouble into a few years ago in Little Rock, and I did a video, and it's on my YouTube channel, that I was here 40 years ago, and I was committing terrible crimes because I was still lost. But today I'm here 40 years later, and I'm not that same person. But I'm a, I'm a greater person because of finding faith in myself, believing, confidence, listening when people gave me the opportunity like the Bob Michaels and the Gary Wilders who's in the book. Bob Michael gave me an opportunity. And we had fun at Harley Davidson together, Bob. It was a blessing. But I just wanted to shout out to a few people I see popping up. Please there. do. I, go ahead and keep chatting at Bob because Bob will probably send me a Harley Davidson t-shirt or something now that he's had. Right, he's, right now, he's living his life with Lisa and I see Lisa popped up. Right. They're, 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 they're newlyweds. And I think he's living in like Europe or England or somewhere and I got to get there because I heard the beer is really good and the food is really good there but these are people that I know that I've known for years that are that are truly living the life they want because they stepped out of those ruts and those and 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 not even saying where they was was bad it was excellent Bob was the owner of a Harley Davidson dealership Joe was living Lisa were living their life as speakers but then they said you know I can be more I can do more I can serve more Plus, I can live in a warmer environment. I'm still stuck. So, so uh, it doesn't matter how many times you crawl out. You still got to find. You can still. And I love the ruts anymore because a rut is an opportunity. A pothole is an opportunity, and uh, to grow, and be more, and do more, and serve more people, just like you're doing with this program, Eric. Thank you. Um, I, you know, as somebody from Minnesota, so we always have to pick on Wisconsin or. Iowa, I could say you probably yeah, especially had a better Iowa. life. I, I could probably say you had a better life in Arkansas than you could ever have in Wisconsin, but that would just be a Minnesota, you know, uh, sort of elbow jab at the, the sister neighborhood state. So, and I love the fact that you put this in here, do the right time, not the hard time. The right time is leading a good life. And so you've been yeah. able to do both the hard time and the right time. Yeah. And I love the way you set up the book. And I want to sort of outline something for those who haven't bought the book yet. The yet thing is in there. By the Thank way. you. You're a good salesman. <laughs> um, always trying. 
So there are seven chapters, loving life, believing in yourself, finding faith, letting go, getting right, knowing you can do it, what would I say today, and transformation is real. So each chapter sort of covers on that topic as, as Larry had walked through it. And then at the end of each chapter, and I always like homework, not that I ever do it, but I like it. Um, is I never you, liked it in school, Larry. That you have three steps. I want to give them three simple steps. Just three simple steps, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Three simple steps. I don't want to complicate it. It kind of wraps up that chapter. Uh, and uh, again, I love I loved chapter seven. Chapter seven had me in tears the whole time I wrote it. Because it took, you know, we talk about don't look back in the past and don't look in the rearview mirror. I want to give people permission. It's okay to go back, just don't camp out there. Don't live there. You know, when it comes to bridges, we're either building them, crossing them, or burning them. It's okay to cross a bridge, a bridge to reflect, because what that does is that helps build your confidence of where you are today. We can use the past to make ourselves better today. Did you read the part, Eric, about, about what I had to eat for 30 days? Yeah, I forgot what they called it. Um, now, we don't have to spend time on that tonight. It was, I ate, I ate that grew. It was like a piece of cornbread for 30 days because I elected by trying to escape, I ended up in what they called the hole, which was solitary confinement. And through that, there was another gentleman who tried to escape. I didn't really know him that much, but he hung himself. And he killed himself. But it's a short story. I don't know how we are on time. But this was how a seed planted in my life when I didn't know they were planting seeds. The only seeds I knew were the seeds of the corn I was picking. <laughs> but, but about 30 days after this inmate hood, his name was James, it all came back to me as I wrote this book. It was scary but delightful. It was a blessing. It was God saying, it's okay, Larry. You went back, but look what you're doing now for me and other people. But the chaplain came to me about 30 days later and said, Larry, the mother of the inmate who hung himself wants to talk to somebody other than the prison officials. I think I want you to talk to her. And I write in that book and in the fifth book, simply listen, why me? I'm just some young lost soul doing time, hard time, right? What can I do? That chaplain planted a seed. He's seen something in me. It's our duty to see something in other people every day. And plant. He's seen it. He's seen value and leadership, and he's seen a loving soul that I didn't even know I had in me. He goes, well, you talk to the mother. 30 days later, it's like M.A. Cockrell, go to the chaplain. <laughs> I get there, and I'm talking to James's mother. I've never met her before. All I could do is be honest and say, I knew James. He was doing life for, 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 for murder. She knew that. I said he played chess. He knew how to play chess. I always beat him, though. We played chess for cigarettes there. You know, cigarettes are like money. But I told him, I told her as much as I could about the James I knew, not the prisoner that the institution knew. Here's what I know now. And when I wrote this piece, tears were rolling out of my eyes. And I know we can all do this every day. That mother walked out of that chaplain knowing something about her son she didn't know. She didn't walk away with what the official report was that he just killed himself. See, that chaplain, why, why was I there? I believe today I was there for that sole purpose. Maybe me getting caught in 30, 60 days later was to help James Hood's mother. I don't know. But I believe in things bigger than me. Just like Joe and I experienced in Guatemala, their stories. We, we have a duty every day to plant seeds. We need to seek out the pain, the joy, the encouragement. And by doing this, we will let people know that their lives matter. Because Eric, you and I both know, and our listeners, we don't know what battle someone's in. Everybody has a mountain to face. You know, that's why this book has a mountain on it. It wasn't about cancer. It's about you facing your cancer. Everybody has something going on. We got to be careful, intentional about listening for the pain, looking for the opportunity to plant a seed. 
tell somebody, give them a book, buy them a story, buy them a cup of coffee and just listen to them. It could be a total stranger. That's why I get up and walk around the neighborhood. I think the cops are getting leery of me in Cedarburg. <laughs> What's that guy doing every morning? You know, I'm trying to make a difference on purpose, which is on my website. Well, so um, going back to the book for a sec, um, on chapter one, you end with the three challenges or three questions or tasks. And the first one, and so, so here's where we're at, people. So we've got this lovely book, great title, good color. I got the hard copy, ha ha. Um, but what are you gonna do now? Where are you gonna start? What is the next step for you until that book arrives in the mail, until you get to Amazon or go over to Larry's website and order a copy, what are you gonna do now? So here are your three homework tasks to start today. And go ahead and just keep doing them until the book arrives. Because when the book arrives, you can go on to chapter two's homework and three. Accept yourself just as you are. Accept that you're okay. Just as you are. Just, just, That's it, just you're okay. Accept where you are. And every morning, wake up and say, I love me. I accept who I am today. And just move on from there. Step two is love yourself with all your heart. Be okay with who you are and what you have to give. I always sort of coach clients around that little drummer boy. It may look small compared to the other person, but in your hands, it is large. And so quit trying to say, well, I don't have anything of value. I'm, you know, I'm just a prisoner. I, I just did 30 days in solitaire. I don't know how to counsel a grieving mother. Don't worry about what you don't have. What you had was a moment to stop and listen and share. And so is, is homework assignment number two. Um, be okay with who you are and what you have to give to the world, to your spouse, to a stranger on the street, to whoever you in, come in con contact with. And number two Eric, is Eric, be we okay. all got something to give. Always. And it Eric, we all got great. something to give. Really can I say, can I mention somebody? Can I mention somebody, Eric? Yeah. I don't know if he's still there. There's a John Nichols Sr. that popped up. I can't These are friends from mine. Yeah, there's a John Nichols Sr. that popped up. I hope you're still there, John. These are people I've known for 45 years that didn't know a lot of this about me. They're from my Little Rock days. I know their whole family. John, I love you and your family, and I thank you for being here. And I know we all struggle in life. But when we start loving ourselves, we can learn to love our dreams and other people. It was tough for me to start doing that because I had to let ego go. Because ego's telling me I don't need to be, I love myself. I, what is that crazy guy from Arkansas talking about? Well, that's an easy out. That's that success. Destroy the, 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 the walls. Until we truly start loving ourselves and accepting who we are, where we are, and where we are is where we're supposed to be. See, I realized in addiction, I was supposed to be there. The crack pipe was my friend, but now I can talk to people who are dealing with crack. Uh, you know, uh, bankruptcy and debt. They were my friends. I was there because now I accept the fact, whether it was true or false, fact or fiction, I've accepted the fact that that's where I was supposed to be. No regrets. And, get, you know, there's going to be more. I'm going to keep loving myself, though. And I, I, I've got to practice what I preach, Eric. Well, and we you know, have I got to live it. Three, because I can see Joe's finger is on the three button. Like, oh, come on, you guys, you got to do number three. You can't leave me hanging with two. So number three is be ready for your best life to come. Your exciting future picture. Get ready. I love the way you say that with such definitiveness as in the statement as as sort of affirmation that if you do number one and number two and you wake up every morning and do number one and number two and you don't do anything else please do number one and number two every morning before you leave the house <laughs> if you work on <laughs> sorry those, about that. I have to know that if you work on those two things number three will has to happen there is no way the universe It'll just will come. deny it from happening so as you begin to wonder okay you know Larry, Larry sparked something here. He, he, he actually made me think that maybe there's a different life, a better life, that I really do matter, that my life matters. What should I do? Joe has kindly typed the first two things. And the number three thing, you don't really have to do anything except sit in expectancy to receive it. 
because it will show up and it will hit you upside the head. That's the way the universe rewards. And so as we wrap up, um, Amazon or your website, what's the best way to order the book? Well, I'd like to answer that. I'd like to make a special to your leaders, oh, all, or listeners bonuses, also. Bonuses. Here's what I'd like to say. Sure, you can get it on Amazon. Okay. They won't let me sell autographed copies on Amazon. All right. You can get it there. If you got an Amazon account, they'll contact. Yeah, they'll contact it and they'll send you the book. They'll get it. But if you go to to my link or just email me at Larry at LarryCockle.com, I'll send you a link. But this this is my fourth book, Eric. This first time I did a hardcover. I love it. It feels good. Now we got paperback, but let me tell you that Joe, no, Joe has a hardcover. Oh. It feels good. It feels valuable, right? I love the hardcover. Most of my books in my library, I buy hard. I spend it. But here's what I want to say. If they'll go to me or go to Facebook and just say, send me the link, they can find Larry Cockrell anywhere. Just spell it right. <laughs> but uh, then what I'll do and put Eric's show, and, I'll, and you just pay for the paperback, I'll save you the seven dollar upcharge and the free ship, and I'll ship free, and I will send you a hardcover copy, autograph copy, hardcover autograph copy. It has to, it had, you got to let me know you got it from Eric's show, and you, when you when I send you the link, you would just go buy the paperback for fourteen ninety five, but I'm going to send you the twenty two ninety five hardcover as a free upgrade. Everybody likes free upgrade. Hey, I'm flying to Arkansas in two weeks. And American Airlines gave me an upgrade. I love it. I feel special, right? Yeah, but you're going to Arkansas. But I'm also going to see the attorney that I didn't know was working on my case for years while I was in prison. And I got notified one day by the guard that your, your sentence has been, has been reversed to time served. And I'm like, what, are you joking with me or something? They showed me the newspaper article. There was an attorney by the name of Jim who kept working on my case, not even getting paid. I didn't know he was working on it. He got my case re re uh, turned over to time served, which means I got released early after years with no parole. I'm going to see him in two weeks in Little Rock. I haven't seen him in years. We're going to go up to his fancy office, and I can't wait to give him a book. I feel sad that he's not in here, but when I revise with his permission, his story of how he worked in my life when I didn't know it. So the question is, whose life you working in that they don't know? Don't do it for recognition, right? But I want to upgrade. If anybody buys a book in order, send me an email, Larry at Larry Cockrell, or go to Facebook and just send me a note. Remind me you're on Eric's show and you want the paperback, and I'll send you the link that will take it right to my publisher. I will personally ship it out at free, and I will upgrade you to what I consider – a beautiful hardcover. It feels good. I'm just rubbing it all up myself. <laughs> you know, it's... it's. I offer to your listeners. I don't do that for everybody. Amen. So, Joe, you're going to write down the website or post the website. Larry, if he forgets how to spell your name, just come back in after this is over and just type it in the comments. And then if you'll just, after you bought the book, just put, I know Eric, and Larry will take care of the upgrade and the rest for you. Um, if yeah, you just say in, Eric's, Eric's, Eric's TV program. Nah, Produ just do, just do you can say producer for Eric. Eric. Don't put in Joe's name because then you'll get double. Yeah, Joe's and I'm going to send you a hardcover. Yeah, the paperback you'll pay and I'll upgrade you to a hardcover free shipping autograph. So it's funny because on my bookshelf, sometimes I have two of the same books and people come in and say why. And it's like, well, the hard copy always stays with me. And if somebody wants right. to borrow a copy, they always get the soft. Get the paperback. <laughs> the paperback. The paperback's good, but the hardcover's a little better. And I can't I'm handle. proud of my hardcover book, Eric. I want more people to have it, but I have to pick the chosen ones to get it. Hey, see this, Joe? I got the hardback. Joe knows how to find me. Joe's high-tech like you are. Joe knows I'm not a high-tech guy. Joe's when we did our public be. seminar business, he made sure that everything was live. See, now Joe is a good you covered before Joe. So Elizabeth has got you covered. Well, Larry, I want to thank you for being part of Author Talk in this new format on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. 
Um, we've got two other authors coming up. Um, and I lost my little link. So I'm going to have to give me a minute. Oops, I can't find it. But anyhow, we've got Eric K coming up. Let me sell you something. This is a phenomenal book for people in sales or that um, are in the sales space. He is a master salesman, um, works in corporate America as sales. So it's going to be great. He'll be joining us on December 19th. And then Sebastian Richards, who lead like a superhero. It's all things superheroes in leadership. So it's going to be fun. But Larry, again, thank you for bringing I love that title. to my attention. Uh, your life matters. Thank you, Eric. And thank you for the bonus for my 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 guests tonight and in recent. Eric, Eric, for two days you have worked on putting this together with some slow technology guy from Arkansas. God bless you. I, I'm going to send you, Eric. I'm going to send you my sales book too. Oh, I'm going to be a sales. Uh, I'm going to use that as a treat. I'm going to because you've worked two days to get this thing live. It's it's a labor, I of, love. It's a labor of love. Um, it's, it's, <coughs> technology is not always the best friend, but then again, you were able to ignite, to touch into lives that, um, physically are separated from you, but because of technology, they heard your message, they learned, and they were able to carry it to the next level. And so it is always worth the opportunity to share a message, grow a person and be of service. So thank you for giving me that gift. Thank you. And thank you, Joe, for the words you just said. I, I haven't figured out how to type and talk at the same time, but Joe, thank you very much for your participation. And the words you just wrote up there mean a lot to me. Yeah. I, Eric, I thank you for this time together. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. I will be back in just, a, well, hey, 12 hours from now, we'll be back for Success Life Live here on Facebook. And then we have Fun Friend Friday coming up on Friday with Pat. So until... We get together one more time. Thank you. Everybody take a moment and say thank you, uh, Larry, for writing such a great book and for sharing his insight into the book with us tonight. And I want to thank everybody for joining me for Success Life Live Author Talk. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you.